Just another case, I suppose you'd call it. As judge of the juvenile court, I've handled hundreds. Funny, though, the way you can never get used to them. Take Edie Adams here. She tried to prove she had nerve, ran off with a stranger who promised to marry her. Well, he robbed the building and loan office. The police picked him up, and here she is in my chambers, a delinquent. Delinquent in good sense. <laughs> I can't get over it sometimes, how teenagers can be such suckers. Do you know what a sucker really is? Ask any carnival pitchman. The sucker is the guy who thinks he's smart, that he's putting something over on you. Take the old shell game. The sucker never wins. Why? Because the pea is really a ball of wax. It's never under the shell. It's under the operator's fingernail. All right, what's that got to do with you? You never fell for the shell game. Don't fool yourselves. A lot of you have fallen for it, thrown away a future like nothing in the history of the world. For what? A kick or a flame, a thrill? You think you're smart enough to get away with it, but you're just being a sucker, what I call being delinquent in good sense. Like these two, parked on a lonely road, just looking for trouble. And trouble is there, all right. <laughs> If you look hard enough, you can always find it, especially if you're the sharp one, the guy or gal who doesn't have to listen to your parents' good sense or follow the rules because you're smart enough to beat the game and take care of yourself. That's what this couple thought. Did you read about the case in the newspapers? They found out how it feels to be a sucker. Too late to do any good, but they found out. What they didn't know was that men like this make a practice of lurking in lonely lovers' lanes to prey on young people who don't know any better than to be there. Sometimes the victims are lucky. They lose only money or their jewelry, but not this time. These two were fortunate to get out with their lives, and that's an experience they'll never forget. One case, and there are hundreds more in my files, all normal, average kids who saw their lives ruined in a few hours, or even in minutes. Let's take a look at another one. Mary Hansen. There's nothing wrong with babysitting in itself. It gives parents freedom, it gives you a chance to make some money, and learn how to handle small children. That's true so long as you and your parents know the people but Mary put an ad in a newspaper for sitting jobs. But the idea of going to a strange home with someone you never saw before just because he answered an ad, well, it's plain idiotic. You wouldn't go away with a stranger for any other reason, and just because it's under the guise of babysitting doesn't make it all right. This time, even Mary's mother is fooled. You see, he gave her a phone number where she could reach her daughter anytime. An hour and a half past time, and Mary isn't home yet. About time to call that number he left you, isn't it, Mrs. Hanson? You think it's silly to worry, don't you? After all, what could happen to Mary on a babysitting job? But the woman who answers the phone has no family. She never even heard of the man or of Mary Hansen. 
No, she has no idea where the man got this number. And now, Mrs. Henson, it is time to worry. But I'm afraid it's too late to do any good after letting your daughter drive away with a stranger. Another headline. This one was just last week. It's in my files. You can read about it. Now, let's take another example. Ethel Ryan's case, one of the nicest girls in her school. Like a lot of juniors and seniors, Ethel and her friend Lynn thought they were too sophisticated for boys of their own age. They wanted somebody more glamorous. And the two in the convertible were just what they had in mind. To me, it would seem that the fact they've never seen either of them before should make a difference. Well, it does to Lynn for a minute, but Ethel talks her into it. It's daytime, Ethel says, and aren't they grown up and smart enough to handle any situation? Well, why not? Lynn agrees, finally. Both of them got home safely. And they're really in luck, Lynn tells her mother. She and Ethel met two of the nicest boys and they're going out with them tonight. Who are they? And where did they meet them, Mrs. Co asks. Well, Lynn explains, they don't know their names yet. She and Ethel missed their bus and... You mean they picked you up and you don't even know them? Well, her daughter is certainly not going out with strangers. She may be old-fashioned, she tells her daughter, but that's fine. So, Ethel gets the bad news. Lynn's mother says no. Well, it's tough. But Ethel certainly isn't going to give up a good time even if she has to go alone. Lynn wishes she had a mother like Ethel's, one who never forbids her daughter anything. See you later, Ethel says. Maybe. Well, I wish that were all there was to it. One girl out on a date, the other disgusted at staying home. But life is not quite that simple. When one breaks the rules, we pay for it. Walt soon decides that without Lynn, three is a crowd, so Tom leaves them alone. Now Ethel is really on her own. I suppose just about here, the horse laughs are starting in the audience. All right, go ahead and laugh. Of course, Ethel isn't laughing. She can almost hear all the warnings she never listened to about being picked up by strangers. And here's something really funny. Go ahead, have a good laugh. Like Mr. and Mrs. Ryan and Ethel herself, and I can tell you about hundreds of cases. I hope you're beginning to get the idea. Mr. and Mrs. Adams are, and Edie too. She's going to a detention home for three months. Plenty of time to think about whether a few minutes of showing off or feeling sharp is worth a lifetime of regrets. If you're willing to risk that, you're not the young American men and women I think you are. Think it over. Why not get really wise, really hip? Don't be a sucker. Thank you.